Welcome back to a new video about stroke analysis using Fourier series and it is our example number two. We continue with a different circuit using the Fourier series for our circuit analysis. So let's look at our example number two. We have in this case the following circuit. We have the voltage source Vs which is applied to an RC circuit and we would like to have the output response of this circuit. As shown here we have the circuit given with the R of 50 ohms and there is a capacitor of 5 farads. And we would like to determine the output voltage as said before for this input signal Vs which is given by this Fourier series. So we have the DC term which is just 1.5 volts and the AC term will be determined by these terms. We will see that this N will uh, start at, my, at 1 and it will go all the way to infinity using of course integers. So it is 1, 2, 3 etc. So how can we determine then the output voltage, output signal, using this input signal expression. We will use for that the Fourier series. So let's look at the solution step by step. So first, let's determine our radian frequency, which is given by this expression, omega n, is given by n times the fundamental frequency omega zero. And in this case, you can see in the expression for the in the AC terms, what the fundamental frequency will be, that's 2 pi n. So actually 2 pi, and that is then times the n. That is will, that will be the expression for my omega n I will use later in our analysis. Because if I want to determine the V out, the output voltages, the one way to do that is using the voltage divider rule in this circuit. So I can say the output is equal to the reactance, the capacitor voltage, divided by the total impedance, which is R plus the X of C. So if I now work out the reactance of the capacitor in this expression and a little bit simplified it, I have this following expression. If I then substitute the values given here for 50 ohms and 5 farads, I have this expression. So it is really straightforward. And a little bit simplification will result in this expression. And I will use this later on in our analysis for the DC and AC response using this input for the circuit for the output. So let's first look at the DC, which means zero radius per second or zero hertz. So n is zero, which means omega n will be also zero. That means the following, the input will be only three over two, 1.5 volts. So that's actually what we only apply. If you have a DC input, the capacitor, without going to, into any any uh, details, we can see the capacitor will act as an open circuit. So if you have a capacitor which acts as an open circuit, that will then be the total voltage at the output. Why? The capacitor looking as an output will have an infinite impedance or reactance. That will mean, looking at this expression, that the total input voltage will be at the output in this circuit. So that means if your input has only DC term, that means also the output will have a, exactly the same input voltage because the capacitor is an open for DC. That's the conclusion we have for DC analysis. For the AC analysis, which will mean for the end harmonic, we have the following. Then we will use this expression and you will look at these terms later on. So what we have is the following. So Vs, which is this, given of course in the polar representation, we will see that 3 pi n is our amplitude and the phase in this case is as discussed earlier minus 90 degrees why because we take the reference the cosine term so this must be converted to cosine to pi n t minus 90 degrees and that will result in this phase shift so that's actually what we need to add if you want to work with cosine as your reference signal for the analysis so that's actually what i do so if I now then change this polar representation in the rectangular representation, we have done this in the separate video about phases and complex numbers. So if you want more details about that, please type in co uh, phases and complex numbers in the channel. You will see a lot of information or examples about this. If you work it out, you will get this simplified expression for just Vs only for the AC terms. Now I will now use this in here just to work out the AC response for the, at the output. So, 
This is the input. I mean, this is the input and this is the response, the dynamics of our circuit. And if you just simplify this, you will have this expression. You will see that this is, of course, has a magnitude and also its phase. So the magnitude will be just three divided by the amplitude of this expression, which is just this expression. Work it out for yourself, raise phrase straight forward. But this has a minus 90 degrees phase shift because it is an imaginary part which will be pointing in a negative y direction and the phase contribution of this is given by this expression so you will have minus 9 degrees for sure from the numerator and the arc tangent of 500 pi n over 1 which is just this will be your phase contribution of the denominator and since this is a denominator i will have to place of course a minus sign now if i of course simplify this i have then this expression which will be this this amplitude and this is my phase contribution of the V out. I can then convert this into time domain. And how do I do that? I use this and then set the amplitude and the phase in a template for the cosine. The cosine, which is shown here with a 2 pi nt, which is just from the input expression. This is just actually the frequency expression. I will just place here the phase shift. That's actually what I have done. And I've placed in front of the cosine, I placed the amplitude. Now, since there's a minus sign, I have to, of course, place a minus sign here. And I have 3 over 2, which is just the DC value. That's actually what I really need to have. Now, what's the next step? Next step is actually work towards the uh, V out in more detail. Since this is a cosine 2 pi and t with a minus 90 degrees, I can of course work it out again back to the sine by just using uh, a formula for the cosine and the sine term, a sine formula. So this is actually just in simplified form this one. So this is actually what we have now. Now, if I now continue, what do I have? I have then the following expression v out will be 3 over 2 minus 3 over pi. And then the summation, which is just given by this. And I've just now determined all the necessary AC terms and also the DC terms for the V out. So, of course, this is this has a lot of terms that are actually infinite terms. So we have, of course, determined uh, all the terms together. So well, let's look at the first four terms. So N1, M2, N3 and N4 will give me the four terms. So let's look at it in more detail. What do we have? We have the following. For n is 1, I have the v out 1, which will be given by this expression. You see, I have just used this formula. And I've just placed 1 for the n, and also here, and also there, and also there. So I have this expression. This is also 1. So I have then this expression, which we see the 0 0.608 millivolts in the sine of 2 pi minus almost. 90 degrees, this will be for n is 1. And for n is 2, again, this is all this is on 2. And I've just play, made a 2 here, and made a 2 there, which is actually shown here. And then work it out also in the phase. And I have this expression for the second term. Now, for the first, then second, we have this one. And for the third one, in a similar form, and for the fourth one, I have actually this expression. So I have now four terms for four first harmonics and I have a DC term. So what we do next is we collect them together and see what the actual expression is for the total output voltage. So what we then have for our total output voltage is the following. We just collect the DC term and all the output voltages for the harmonics. Now, since we have a minus sign, we don't uh, forget that. We need to, of course, place a minus sign in front of all these expressions. So we have a minus this one, minus this one, minus this, and minus that one. So that's actually what you see here. Of course, you have infinite terms, which I have just collected the four AC terms and one DC term. So that will result in this expression if you just combine all the terms. So you can see all of them are sign, the minus sign, minus sign, minus sign, minus sign, and it is just this term. Again, don't forget this. This is the 3 over 2, which is 1.5 volts, but all those four terms are in millivolts, so I have to change this in 3000 over 2, which is then 1500 millivolts, just to get 
to 1.5 volts so that's actually what we really need to adjust this here so let's look at the next situation which is the amplitude i mean the output signal spectrum so this is the signal what we have determined and this is our spectrum which is then here the amplitude spectrum and also the phase spectrum so what you see is at dc which you also see here we have then 1500 volt millivolts and the phase is just zero and if i go to pi i don't see any amplitude which is don't have any output for pi radians per second and i also don't see any phase shift if i look at the 2 pi i see a phase shift of almost minus 89 degrees but the amplitude will be in absolute sense will be this so if i just take the absolute value of this one i will have of course 0 0.608 if you of course if you want the actual phase of this one you need to of course also take that minus 180 degrees that will result of course in a plus approximately plus 90 degrees for this okay so i've just taken the positive value and made the phases here negative again in a similar form for this third term fourth and a fifth term i have the, exactly the same expression as shown here so you can looking at the expression for the v out in the time domain you can see what the amplitudes are and also the associated phases in this spectrum and it will be of course very handy to see what's going on with our circuit and what kind of response we have and what are the actual contributors because this is 1500 and it's of course not to scale and this is just very small it's also very small it's also very small so all those terms will not contribute very much and that's actually the main contributors in this example so this is our example number two and we have used now a different circuit to discuss this in more detail i hope this clarifies the situation in more detail we will continue with the, another example keep in touch if you have any questions or comments Please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Thanks again and see you next time.